Okay. The table gives a short run supply schedule of three firms, X, Y, and Z, which compromises an industry. So these firms, X, Y, Z, are the entire industry. So if this is the entire industry, that means this firm produces some of the industry, this firm produces some of the industry, and this firm produces some of the industry. And combined is how we know at each price level. So at this price of $1, there are 100 quantities supplied of whatever units this is. There are 100. See? None from here, none from here. So total, 100. So at the price of $2, it's 150 produced from this firm, plus 50 produced from this firm, and none produced at this firm. So at the price of $2, we have 200. At the price of 3, we have 200 from this firm, 80 from this firm, and 70 from this firm, which adds to 150 plus 200, 350. So at the price of $3, we have 350 quantity supply. Okay, and the last, well, you get the point. 250, 150, 100 combined, and we have the price, we have the, at this price, we have the quantity demanded from each firm at this price. So this will be 100, 250, and what's that, 500. Okay, so the answer here is which is the point on the, which is a point on the short run supply curve schedule of the industry? This is the supply schedule. At this price, we are scheduled to produce 100. At this price, we are scheduled to produce 200, 150 plus 50, and so on. So we look here at price, at the price of $2, did we produce, did we produce 300? So the price of $2, we produce only 200. So this A is wrong. B, 350, well, that looks like our answer, 200 plus 80 plus 70, that at the price of $3, we produce 350, X firm X, firm Y, firm Z. So this is the right answer. The others are incorrect. At the price of four, we only produce 250 plus 150 plus 100, which is 500. Here it says 1150, so this is wrong. So this is correct, uh, B, 350. Number seven. Okay, the diagram shows the relationship between the total expenditures and price of three products. Product number one, product number two, and product number three. And they put all of them all in one graph. Pretty interesting. Which curve represents the product with the price elasticity and a unitary price elasticity of demand? Well, we know that a price elasticity of demand, the price elasticity of demand is the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. So put that down on your piece of paper. The percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in the price, okay? So this total expenditure is P times Q. It's the number of, it's the number of, um, of quantity that we bought at that price. So P times Q, okay? Now, this, this price uh, unitary elastic, when it's unitary, it means the percent quantity, percent change in quantity demanded is equal to the percent change in price. Those two are equal. That's what this unitary means. So what that means in terms of total expenditure, as the price changes, so let's say the price goes down, the percent change in price goes down, the quantity demanded the percent change of quantity to demand it moves and increases in the same proportion as the decrease and change okay uh, okay so let's look at it like this we have the percent change in quantity demanded uh, divided by the percent change uh, in price now the unit elasticity means that as the price changes, the quantity changes in the opposite direction just as much. So uh, let me demonstrate this here. If I go to a font and I, let's start with the price change, the price, the percent change. Uh, if it decreases by two, one, two, and I look at my percent change and it will increase equally, one, two, okay? That's what it means by price, a unit elasticity. 
the price drop by two clicks, one, two, and the price quantity, the percentage uh, quantity demanded increased by one, two. Okay, and let's go back to the beginning. Two, let's go back here. Uh, one, two. Okay, so now if the price, if the percent price change uh, will, will increase, one, two, the quantity demanded will decrease the same percentage, one, two. Okay, so that's what it means percentage, uh, uh, the unitary price elasticity of demand. The, the, the unitary one is a very special case of the price elasticity of demand where the price and the quantity uh, move in opposite directions uh, equally. So I'll do it one more time. It's very interesting. One, two. One, two. Okay, so that's back at the beginning. So uh, imagine that the price changed, uh, that it drops. One, two. That means the quantity demanded will increase uh, the same, the percent change in quantity demanded. One, two. Okay, notice, notice that given this change, the total expenditure is the same. It is the same. Because even though the price dropped, the quantity demanded uh, made up for the change in price. So even though the price dropped, we sold more. Okay, let's do the opposite. Uh, one, two. Uh, down. Uh, down, one, two. Okay, so this time the price goes up. One, two. And this one goes down. Two. Okay, so even though the price went up, the percentage, the the even though the quantity demanded, the percent change in quantity demanded has dropped, uh, the percent change in price has increased to uh, a com to take account for the drop in quantity demanded. So uh, you see here that in both cases, uh, I'll copy and paste here. Let's do it like that. Paste. Uh, Okay, make it all. Let's make all of these. So in this in this one, the price change went up. The percent change went up. Let's go back down. And this one, let's make this go down. One, two. This goes up. One, two. Okay. So in this example, the price in this version, the price goes up and the quantity demanded shrinks, right? But the but they still say the same total uh, expenditure because at the end of the day, total expenditure is equal to price times quantity, okay? So it, the price went way up, but the quantity demanded dropped, but still the price time quantity equals uh, the same level TE, total expenditure. And the same here, so this total expenditure Okay, is equal to this total expenditure. Even though the price the price dropped, there's sold so much more of the product that the total elastic the total expenditure is the same. So as the price rises, as the price rises, the expend total expenditure remains constant. So that is this one. Okay. Now, so that means one one this good one is uh, the unit price elasticity. So that is this answer here. And three, well, it's the normal one, price elasticity. Un under the price elasticity, uh, let's take this back down. Price elasticity is the, the thing that we always study where when the, price, uh, when the price goes down, the quantity demanded uh, increases more than half. It, it, it drops. So as the price goes up, the to total, uh, this is important, uh, this is an important uh, idea here that as the, as the price change, here go, the percent change in price, percent change in quantity. If they go up at the same, if this, if this goes up and this drops at the same percentage, the total expenditure remain constant. That's what it means by unitary price elastic. What price elasticity means is as this 
uh, goes up uh, one, two, uh, this goes up more than two. So this goes up one, two, three. Now it's elastic. Okay, so as the price goes up, the quantity demanded will drop, meaning that the TE will drop because the quantity demanded is dropping faster than the rate of change of price. So the answer here is, the answer here is where both of these are happening. So the answer here is C. The answer here is C, where the elasticity, unit elasticity, where the price increases and the quantity uh, percent quantity uh, is in the same proportion as the price change that's like this and E the price increases and the percent change in quantity is more much more than the percent change in price okay number eight okay I don't know how to do this one so we'll skip it okay joke <laughs> okay okay that's a joke that's a joke Okay, the table shows that the quantity demanded of, of good X and Y correspond to different prices of the two goods. Okay, within which range is the value across elasticity of demand for good Y with respect to the price of good X? So, you look at this and you try to make sense of it. The first thing that you need to understand is we're looking at the demand for good Y, so that's the percent change in good Y with respect to the percent change of the price of good X. So write this down. The percent change in good, percent change in the quantity demanded of good Y divided by the percent change in price of good X. Okay, so here are the prices for good X. Here are the quantities for good, uh, good Y. Okay, all the information is there. Now, all you need is your formula. Um, Q, Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q2 plus Q1. Put those two Q2 plus Q1 in parentheses, divide by two, divided by P2 minus P1, divided by P2 plus P1, divided by two. Okay, do not make this mistake on your Cambridge exam and multiply both sides by two. That is a mistake. Okay, I, I don't wanna go and it'll take a long explanation, but do not make that mistake on your Cambridge exam. Q2 minus Q1 divided by, in parentheses, Q2 plus Q1 divided by two. That quantity divided by P2 minus P1 divided by P2 plus P1, uh, that quantity divided by two. Okay, use that formula. Now, all you do now is you put in these numbers. So here, the P2 is 10 minus eight, right? Divided by eight plus 10 divided by two. So that's uh, 10 minus eight is two divided by the half of these, which is nine, okay? And on top, the percent change would be 30 minus 20 divided by 30 plus 20 uh, divided by two is 25. So 30 minus 20 uh, divided by 25 over eight over 10 minus eight divided by nine. And what you get is a number that is, uh, what was the exact number? The exact number is, I saw this earlier and I deleted it, congratulations. Okay, what you'll get there for that percent, what, what you'll get there for that um, price elast cross elasticity of demand, because we're talking about how the price of good X affects the quantity of demand of good Y will fall within C. And if you do it again for this, here, 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 here. Those are the first four numbers that you use. So we have our big equation, P2 minus P1, I mean, Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q2 uh, plus Q1 divided by two, divided by P2 minus P1 divided by P2 plus P1 divided by two. So we have this big fancy equation and all it needs is four numbers to operate it. Uh, the, all it actually needs is two. Uh, numbers divided. You need the the p new and the p old. You need the quantity new and the quantity old. So here, this is the quantity new. This is the price new, and this is the price old. This is the quantity uh, the quantity new. This is the quantity old. So that's one cross elasticity, and then you have to calculate another one. So there's two price elasticities here. Uh, this is the price new, price old, and this is the 
the quantity new, a quantity old. So two price elasticities. And what you find is once you calculate both of those, the cross elasticities will be within this range. C is the right answer. It won't be 1.6 or 2.0. The cross elasticity will be within this range, so within here. Okay? So that's that. Number 10. The diagram shows the demand and supply curves of a commodity before and after a specific tax is removed. What is the tax per unit of output and what is the price after removal of the tax? So what we have here is a basic demand and supply function. Uh, and when we tax, we know that when a good is taxed, the supply moves from here to here, right? Because at each quantity after a tax, each quantity, the price of each quantity is more expensive. So you could think of buying a, a soda or something. The soda is $2 before the tax, you're along this line. But then after the tax, we want a 50% tax. So it's $2 plus the price of the tax. The soda is now $3, okay? So you can see where this is coming from. So here, before uh, the price of whatever quantity it is, whatever this good is, the price was $6. But now they say, okay, at this quantity, each price will be, uh, let's see, six plus seven, seven. So 12 to six is six. So from here to here, the quantity used to cost $6, but now it's gonna cost 12 for the same quantity. That's the tax. And this here, you guessed it, is the height of the tax or the per unit tax, this area, this distance here, 12 to six. Okay, and this is the same here. So at each quantity, this used to be $2 for this quantity, but now they added a $6 tax. So it's $2 plus the tax, six. And now this quantity, it used to cost two, now it costs eight. So the unit per unit tax is six. So before, before, uh, okay, after the tax, we move from here to here, right? The tax per unit, as you guessed it, each quantity, it went up by six. So you go to here, each point, this was two, now it's eight. So the unit cost is six. So here it was six. Now this unit goes up 12 to six, that's six. Okay, so the per unit tax is six. Okay, the price after the removal of the tax will be, uh, okay, so here, this, this is the equilibrium after the tax, eight and whatever this quantity is. But imagine this line is erased, all right? After, uh, price they remove the tax so this line disappears and you're left with this supply curve and this demand curve and this cross here and you can see the price is six so six and six number 10 the demand for a good falls at the same time as its cost of production decrease what will the combined effect of these changes on the price uh, and the quantity supplied of the good. Well, if the demand falls, all, you automatically know that the price is falling, so decrease, so these two are wrong. But we don't know if, with this new demand, what the supplier will do. Will he keep uh, supplying this good, or will he, uh, he or she produce more or less? So we're not certain about how the, the producer will will act immediately on this. So that's why B is the answer. Oh, cool, look at this. Okay, the diagrams show a change in demand from D1 to D2 and a change in supply from S1 to S2 for four different goods. Which diagram, so this is a different good, this is a different good, this is a different good, this is a different good. Cool, nice pictures. Which diagram illustrates the good for which additional new uses have been found, which receives an increase in government subsidy? Okay, so you remember uh, uh, a government subsidy means that we have this level here quantity, and because the government likes it, we want to move to the right. We want to move this way and have more of it, okay? So we're looking for a graph where the S, the S supplied, doesn't move in from S1 to S2. That's incorrect. We're looking for the, exactly the opposite, where S1 moves uh, the line, shifts down S2, okay? So S1, that's where it started. 
S2 means that the line shifted from here and it moved in to here. So here is another one, S1 to S2. So this is wrong because it's shifting the wrong way, wrong way. And okay, so these two are shifted in the right way for the supply. So S1 is moving downwards, S1 is moving downwards, which means that at each level, uh, at, at this price, instead of, instead of getting this, this amount, we get that amount. At every price, we get more. Okay, so that's why it's moving from S1 to S2. So we, we know that the answer is going to be C or D. Okay, these are just moving in the wrong direction. So which diagram illustrates the good for which additional uses have been found, uh, found and which receives increases in government spending? So this thing, this thing that says additional new uses have been found, that means the demand has increased. So not only has the S1, S2 has to uh, increase from this way to this way, the demand has to shift from here outward. So this one, it shifts inward. So D is wrong, leaving C. So we wanted the supply to increase because the government likes it and wants the, more of it. So here, that's the decrease, increase but we also want the demand to increase. See, the demand was here, and now it increases out to there. Number 12. Okay, the table shows the maximum amount three students would, would each uh, be willing to pay for a taxi to take them home from a nightclub. Okay, I didn't say nightclub, maybe a uh, uh, supermarket. supermarket. <laughs> okay, so uh, assume they share the taxi fare as shown in the table uh, below. Which which shows how much they each should pay so that each obtain the same consumer surplus. Okay. Okay. So this is a cool question actually because the consumer surplus it is the amount that you actually pay when you're willing to pay more. Okay. Um, so Jane, for example here, Jane is willing to pay $10, okay? So this table shows the maximum amount the three students will be willing to pay. So Jane is willing to pay $10 at the maximum, but she finds out that, A, the taxi ride uh, is only $2 in case A. So which shows how much they would pay so that each obtain the same amount. So she's willing to pay 10, the taxi driver, uh, they say, okay, you pay two. She's like, yes. That means my consumer plus surplus is eight. The 10 that I was willing to pay and the, uh, minus the $2 that it actually is. So that's eight. Here, it is uh, $8 and $4. So her consumer surplus is four. And she does, Yasmin doesn't get a surplus at all. Six uh, minus six. So she's at the market equilibrium. So uh, here, we need the one that say, they pay the same consumer, they obtain the same consumer surplus. So here, this is not it. Jane gets eight consumer surplus, Sarah gets eight, four, and this one gets zero. So this is not right. Same goes for here. So this is six, this is four, and this is two. I'm subtracting 10 minus four, eight minus four, six minus four. This is what I'm willing to pay, this is what I actually pay, and the difference this is what I'm willing to pay. This is what actually is. That that I kept in my pocket is the consumer surplus. So if I keep doing that, I find that the answer is D, six. Jane, Jane uh, pays $6, has a $4 consumer surplus. Uh, Sarah pays uh, $4 and has a $4 consumer surplus. And Yasmin pays six, uh, is willing to pay six, actually pays two, so she has a $4 consumer surplus. That's a cool way to test consumer surplus. <clears throat> 13. The diagram shows a, a demand and supply curves for parking spaces in a hospital uh, car park. Okay, The managers decide to rely on the price mechanism to allocate parking spaces at the hospital. What is required for this to work? Okay, That is the question. Now, A. Alternative means of transportation must be provided for those unable to afford OP. Okay. A survey will be needed to find out the amount of users who are willing to pay. The capacity of the park will need to be expanded. And the price charge for the park spaces must be OP. Okay. So this one shows the demand and supply for parking space in the hospital car. The managers decide to rely on the price mechanism to allocate. Okay, good. So the price, the price mechanism, the price mechanism 
allows the market, uh, meaning the number of people and the number of spaces, to create a market equilibrium. Okay, so I'm okay. I'm not willing to pay that. I'm willing and willing to pay that. And, and people go around, and then they until the market equilibrium is set, where everyone drops their prices low enough and sets the quantity that at the equilibrium that everyone is willing to pay at that specific price. Okay, so we here we see our equilibrium is at uh, here. Okay, with the price level OP. So alternate means of transportation must be provided for those unable to afford OP. Uh, that's not how the price mechanism work. Either you pay the price or you leave. Okay. So a survey is unnecessary because we know already that OP, this is the OP is the price for this equilibrium. D, the capacity of the car park will need it to be expanded. Uh, it would be nice again that we would like to have more. We would like to have more, but this is what we're working with. So the answer is D, the price charge for parking space must be OP. This is the equilibrium that the market mechanism set. This is the price at that equilibrium. So that's why D is the correct 